a fair amount of time has passed since the last episode. We are now on the 18th of February, which means the January transfer window has opened and closed. We have spent a lot of money. We've had our biggest window ever. We've spent a lot of money on a goalkeeper. Before we get to that, though, a couple of players have left on permanent deals. German Cardozo has returned to Riga, a team where he spent two, maybe three seasons on loan a couple of years ago. He's gone on a permanent deal because, basically, he wasn't getting game time for us. And I thought, he's probably more useful playing for Riga. We've got about £2 million, I think, once we get all the clauses. 2.1 going up to 2.5. Also, Alex Arthur, the Ghanaian who was on loan at Legia last season, has left the club, signing for Club Bruges. Similarly to uh, Cardozo, we just weren't playing him. In ascending order of price, Wu Lei Dong is a 19-year-old Chinese goalkeeper, and no, he isn't the one we spent all of the money on. He was a free transfer. I looked at him and went, he looks pretty good. He's also Chinese, which sometimes helps when it comes to finances. He's in, he's probably not going to play. For £350,000, we have bought the second best African striker, apparently. Aaron Carnell has signed from Sundowns in his native South Africa. And I think we might have ourselves an absolute gem here. He's already played five times for us in the league, scoring three, getting four assists as well. Carnell hasn't really started too many games. So I'm looking forward to maybe next season Carnell will be one of our main strikers. On the left wing, we have signed a Colombian winger called Brian Sanchez. That's right. I think it's going to be Brian. Brian? I'm going to call him Brian because I feel like it's more amusing to have a Colombian called Brian. He's signed for just £1.2 million from Athletic Nacional. And again, I think he's pretty good. Two, apparently, three and a half star current ability, which I'm not quite sure with. The only downside is he's a left winger without a right foot which I would like to have. Obviously, we play inside forwards. I kind of want him to have a right foot, but if he doesn't have one, then he doesn't have one. For £2.3 million on a loan deal, we have signed Brahim Diaz from Barcelona. I was looking to try and sign him on a permanent deal. He didn't want to do it, and we've now kind of replaced him. So he's, he's here. He's good. He's still pretty good at football. 32 years old. He's probably going to play a few games for us, mainly in the league, I would suggest. But yeah, Brahim Diaz, he's here until the end of the season. We can, if we really want to, potentially sign him. I feel like we're not going to. And the reason why he's not getting too much game time anymore is because we have bought ourselves a 22-year-old English right winger called Max Cohen, signed from Manchester City on a permanent deal. We are getting in the big time, boys. We are turning into a big time team. He's already got 10 games and 2 goals for Man City. He's cost £4.5 million. He scored twice for us, got 2 assists in 3 starts as well. I think Max could be a massive, massive player for us. I've been looking to try and strengthen that right wing for a very long time. Max is probably the one to do it. And smashing our transfer record in two, quite literally we've doubled it. £18 million, Vlado Ivle is our new Croatian goalkeeper signed from Dinamo. They had two goalkeepers who were almost identical when it comes to ability. Ivle was the cheaper of the two, the other one was £24 million, so I went for Ivle and I think he's good. I've been looking at Lathuli thinking, he does the job for us in the league, when it comes to Europe, he's a little bit off and on. So we've got ourselves a brand new goalkeeper who's hopefully going to be good enough to basically last us until the end of the save. That is all of the transfer business and the window is obviously closed. You can see on the right hand side, if we go from here, we've also sold a few more people, loaned a few more people. Riga have obviously benefited from this transfer window, picking up three players on permanent deals and Robert Sitz has signed on loan as well, which is going to be good news for Roberts. Before we go too much further... I want to talk about some of our players and some transfer offers that we received throughout January. Ronnie Ruiz was subject to offers of around £20 million. He's still at the club. Toussaint Yao was subject to transfer bids of £50 million. 5 0, not 15, 5 0, and he's still at the club. And he's relatively happy. He's not upset. I might try and extend his contract again soon because obviously in the summer, PSG and Sevilla apparently are probably going to be coming in from around £50 million, but right now he's still at the club. And also the record breaker himself, Haroldo, was having bids of around £25 million from teams in China, which I was I was getting very tempted because we obviously ha we can get strikers easily. We can get strikers easily. Central midfielders and centre-backs and full-backs, I find, maybe not so much full-backs, but centre-backs and central midfielders, I find once you get a good one, you want to keep hold of him. Haroldo, I was tempted to let him go. If they got to about £40 million, I might have let him go. But he's still at the club. He has now scored 76 goals and 41 starts, by the way. 
in what appears to be a very snowy Latvia, we should play at our own stadium. We've got Undersoil Heating. We are going to be playing at Legia Warsaw of Poland. We have got a few of our brand new starters. Brand new starters, brand new signings playing today. Both wingers, we have got, uh, I've forgotten his name, Brian on the left-hand side, Max Cohen on the right. We've also got our goalkeeper in the sticks as well. We are looking strong, apart from the centre of midfield where we are playing Elson Zizi and Ashton Brereton, but that is because of injuries. Ivle with a goal kick then for the Skins Academy. Benavidez, another player who had a lot of transfer interest throughout January, and I rejected all of it. Not as big as some of the other deals, but they were getting up there about £8 million. Max Cohen, the Englishman, runs down the middle, plays it through to Sir Guys Lemkins, and Lemkins, how did he miss that? I thought that went in, the net rippled and everything. I'm expecting to get past Legia with relative ease. We've played them three times already this season, and we haven't lost to them once. We've only conceded one goal, I think, as well. I think we won twice and drew once, so I'm hoping we should be able to get past Legia quite easily and set up a, I think it might be the quarterfinal. Brian Sanchez with a corner, blonde-haired Sanchez and Sir Guys Perkons is there. It is 1-0 to the Skins Academy. Wagner with a throw, our number one left back now guaranteed now that Cardozo is left to go to Riga. Brereton back to Brereton, crosses that ball in. It's Cohen, it's Geraldo, and Geraldo gets his 77th goal of the season. It's February... He's still got about four months left of football to play. I want I want him, I want Haroldo to get 100 goals in all competitions. Corner for Brian this time from the right-hand side. Benavidez is there this time and he heads just over the bar. The two South Americans combining for a chance. Normally when we get to knock out round football in the Europa League, we are kind of up against it. Legia have had one shot so far. I'm, I'm happy, keep it going. Get Haroldo to score two more goals, that would be nice. Sanchez with another corner. This time it is Geraldo at the front post and there is goal number 78. 3-0 at the hour mark and Legia have the ball deep inside their own half and I feel like we're going to steal this away. Benavidez gets it forward, finds Brereton. Now Brian Sanchez, left-hand side is Geraldo. Does use him on a hat-trick. I bet he wants to go for goal. He does go for goal and there is goal number 79 for big Geraldo. I said he's big Geraldo. He's probably about five foot six. Right, time to do some changes then for fitness, I guess, and possibly to try and stop suspensions. Benavidez for Rodrigo Castello. That is going to happen. I wanted to uh, bring on Castello a few times before and just never got around to doing it. Lemkin's also coming off for Ismail Silva. I'm also looking at Keith bringing him on maybe for Toussaint Yao. Final 10 minutes. It does say Toussaint Yao is literally one yellow card away from suspension. So we are going to do that Keith substitution. Yao is four and a half star current ability. That is insane. Final couple of minutes of the game. Keith controls it well inside his own half. Down the right-hand side to Mac Cohen. The two native English speakers. Cohen's going to run across into the middle to Brereton, another native English speaker. Finds Keith again on the right. Back to Zizi. Obviously, he must be able to speak English. We've got a lot of English-speaking players. He spent about four seasons in Manchester. Brereton, back to Perkons. We're going to go forward or we're going to take our time, maybe go across to Benavidez. It's not Benavidez, is it? It's uh, Costello. Perkons again with the ball down the left. Somebody needs to make a run. Ashton Brereton with a yellow card. Lumps it forward. Ishmael Silva, the substitute, makes it 5-0. Is it 5 or is it 4? It's 5-0. It is 5-0 against Legia Warsaw in the home leg. This is good because coefficients as well. Not only are we getting the victory, we're getting the coefficients. All in all, that was a very good day at the office. 5-0 against Legia Warsaw in the first leg. We have to play them again now. Big news, everybody. I asked for a stadium expansion, and I've just convinced the chairman to do it. Let's see what we're actually going to get. They're expanding the stadium, so what? What are we getting? Are we we're going from we're going to six and a half thousand capacity for half a million pounds. When's it starting? It's starting. It's starting in May. Okay, so it'll be ready for the start of next season. What I'm hoping is that our stadium is going to be good enough to play Champions League football. Because right now, we play all of our games at the National Team Stadium, which doesn't even have undersoil heating, which means we have to play on snowy pitches. Let's go to Poland. We're still playing with a second string at central midfield because we've still got injuries to Baranovs and Ronnie Ruiz. Today, we are going to see the first team debut for Vladimir Krolis, number 35, playing alongside Haroldo. Krolis has scored about 50 goals for the under-18s, and he's actually pretty good. Two and a half star current ability, which is as good as Ismail Silva. So Krolis is going to get himself a chance today. Obviously, because we're 5-0 up after the first leg, I'm not too concerned that we haven't got the usual strike power. 
Brian Sanchez with a free kick. It's Tucson Yao at the back post. And Tucson Yao gets his first goal of the season. We are one up here in Poland. I've just seen as well, or I've just realised, Sanchez has taken all of our set pieces and getting a lot of assists from them. I don't know whether he's actually good at them. I feel like he must be if he's taken them and we're doing really well from them. It is Legia coming forward with a ball. Chalmers back to Chimura. Down the right-hand side. Plays it backwards once again. Piotrowski. Chimura. We need to steal this. I'm a bit concerned that every now and then we do look a bit poor when it comes to European football. First leg, we were amazing. Obviously, we're playing away, so you'd expect Legia to be a little bit better. But I still want to beat them like 3-0. Like, I feel like conceding a goal against Legia is a bad sign. Wagner down the left-hand side gets it from the goalkeeper. He's going to run into towards the middle. Elson Zizi, who is, by the way, signing a permanent deal with us in the summer because he's actually quite a useful player to have. He's come off the bench about 15 times this season, so we do kind of use him. Wagner down that left-hand side. He's got a few in the middle. Elson Zizi is one of them. Haroldo's there. Cohen is there. And Max Cohen gets his third goal of the season. 14 minutes on the clock. 2-0 on the night. 7-0 on aggregate. Pretty sure we're going through. Sanchez with another free kick in a very similar location. Plays it to Krollis instead. Back to Sanchez. And Brian Sanchez has got his first goal for the club. Krollis with the assist as well. It's about time Sanchez has scored. He has set up so many other people. He's finally got himself his only goal. Sanchez once again with another set piece. We have signed ourselves an absolute wizard here with set pieces, haven't we? It was Sergei's Perkons heading that one just wide of the goalkeeper's post. I mean, how good is, is Sanchez like, just amazing at set pieces? What's his corners? 15's pretty good. Free kicks are 8. He's not good at free kicks, though, is he? Toussaint Yao's throw finds Haroldo. He's managed to keep hold of it as well. Not sure how. Elson's easy. Crosses it in. Nick's Krollis is there. It's not Nick's. It's Vladimir's. Nick's was a former player of ours who now plays for Riga because, of course, he does. It's Vladimir's Krollis. It is saved by the goalkeeper. We've got five minutes left of the first half. Steal it away. Elson's easy does the job. The Angolan's going to run forward straight down the middle of the pitch. Towards his left, he has got Krollis. He's going to keep going back to Ashton Brereton. Now Brian Sanchez. Wagner's making a run down the left-hand side. Three in the middle. He's been tackled by Chalmers. And Chalmers keeps it in play, kicks it upfield. Steal it back. Ashton Brereton controls it well. That's good to see. I feel like there might be a fourth goal before half-time. You know, Brereton to Zizi. Four to Geraldo. Krollis is there on the ground to Brian Sanchez instead. Three in the middle. Cross it in, buddy. Cross it in. Kicks it into the defender. Gets another chance. Wagner with loads of space. He's crossed it in. Haroldo's shot is blocked. The ball is cleared and it's going to be probably 3-0 to the Skins Football Academy at half time. And we are looking very, very good here in the Europa League. No changes for us at half time. It looks like Legia have done two changes potentially in the middle of the pitch. Sanchez with a corner. It's Benavidez and Benavidez heads that one over the bar. Sanchez is having so many decent set pieces at the moment. He's on an 8.5 rating. Just after the hour mark, let's look at doing ourselves some changes. We're going to take off Percons for Castello. Castello, again, I keep, I need to get him game time. Otherwise, he's just going to get annoyed and we're going to sell him for cheap. So I want to get him some game time. Do we also do Ismail Silva for Haroldo, who hasn't scored? We're going to do that, you know. We're going to bring on Ismail Silva, take off Haroldo. He should have scored a goal, but unfortunately he's not going to get one today. Final 20 minutes of the match. We've only had eight shots on target out of 23. I feel like if we had a few more on target, we'd probably be five or six nil up at the moment. Max Cohen on the right is Toussaint Yao. Two in the middle. Back to Cohen again. Plays it across to Ismail Silva. He needs to find some space. Elson Zizi's there. Cohen's there. Can he get his second of the game? Max Cohen does get his second goal of the game. It is 4-0 here in Poland. Sanchez with a corner final 10. Is it going to be five? Castello is there. Heads just over the bar. I am absolutely loving Brian Sanchez. Of the two wingers we signed, I was expecting Cohen to be the bigger star. Sanchez is doing everything. I don't know if it's just these two games against Legia, but Sanchez has been an absolute star for us. A set-piece wizard, 4-0 on the night, 9-0 on aggregate. We go through to the next round of the Europa League where we could potentially play Chelsea, Manchester United and a whole bunch of other teams. So, who is it going to be? Dynamo Kiev I would take. Rangers I would take. Okay, Copenhagen. Good. Didn't really want them. Don't don't you dare game. Okay, thank you very much. Right, we're not playing Olympiacos. Marseille, Sevilla. We have Getafe. We have Getafe. Are they any good? I'm, I'm so confused. I feel like they've also got one of our former players in their squad as well. 
We are playing Katafe, who I think we've got a good chance here. They do have some good players, but when you look at how old some of their better known players are, Thomas Damaris, 36, Unal, White and Delo, a load of people are all well into their 30s. So uh, maybe, maybe we can get through past Katafe. That is going to be next episode. Thank you very much for watching this one. If you did enjoy the 9-0 victory, do please remember you can leave a like to the videos. If you're new and you're enjoying as well, hit the subscribe button. I'll be back tomorrow with the Getafe matches and hopefully we get ourselves through to the Europa League quarterfinals. Thanks for watching.